So this morning, I have got, um, actually before I start, we're going to pray. Holy Spirit, I want your words to come from me today. I don't want what I've got. I want what you've got, Holy Spirit. I can't get, I can't get sick of asking you, Holy Spirit, because I cannot fix a broken peanut. I can't do anything of myself. I need you. I rely on you, Holy Spirit. And I don't want anything to come from me. Holy Spirit, I invite you. I invite you to come and change hearts today, Holy Spirit. I ask you to push back every spiritual force of darkness that will snatch seeds out of people's hearts today. And I ask you for open hearts to receive what you want to say today. I bind and I break every wicked thing that will come in here and try and steal the message today and i thank you lord god that you are lord over this church that this is your church and you will build your church and you will set people free today and i thank you lord that you have already gone before us in this message in jesus name i pray and in jesus name i say amen, amen. amen. so my message this morning is about the renewing of the mind and the importance of that because it is such um, a, a really important um, revelation to get because we are, and I'm, and I'm going to go through the keys to get to the place um, today in all the verses, but we, we don't fight to get to victory. We are already in victory. We fight from victory. The Word of God says that you are already seated in heavenly places if you are seated in bible times it means that you are finished the work is finished and when jesus says that you are more than conquerors it means that he has done it for you already and we are already victorious in him so we're going to go through his word and find out how to live in this place because we all struggle with it i struggle with it daily and it's a process of going through this and it's a revelation that when we get it it brings such freedom it brings such power and authority to our lives so in ephesians 4 20 to 24 um, paul says but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So the importance of this and the change in the way that we think is so is so paramount um, it is ephesians 4 20 to 24. Um, i'll just give you an, an example um, um this is this is uh, pretty um profound in my own life when i heard this story of, of a, a baby elephant and they stake a baby elephant to the ground with a short chain um with a with a uh, large star picket and the baby elephant can't pull the star picket out but that same elephant when it becomes a massive elephant it won't try and pull that stake out of the ground it's used to its mindset is that that stake because that that elephant is more than capable of pulling that stake out of the ground and going but it doesn't try because its mind is set and its mind has been has been set in that mindset that it cannot escape and we have, we have this um, this enemy, and all he does is lie and try and deceive us. And he lies and sows lies into our mind, and he is the father of lies. In John eight forty four, it says, "You are the father of lie, or you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do." He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. He speaks, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. And in Daniel 8.25, it describes his 
perfectly. He says, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. And that's his weapons. He has no great power. He has no great authority in our lives. But he has got the power to lie to us. He's got the power to say that we are less than what we are. He's got the power to take our authority by making us believe the lie and making us less than who we are. And if we believe that lie, then we are not seated in heavenly places. We're seated on the earth. We can be deceived because he is the great deceiver. And that's the way the Bible des describes him as. He's not this all-powerful being, but he's a liar and a deceiver. And a renewed mind knows that. But 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, we have the mind of Christ. We have, we, all of us, have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ says that you are a son and a daughter, Amen. not a beggar, yep. not a bower and a scraper. You're a son and a daughter. And a son and a daughter knows the love of God. Yeah. A son and a daughter knows the abundance of the power of God that, that comes from the Father. A son and a daughter is so deeply acquainted with the Father and understands the Father's love and understands the blessing of being a son and a daughter and knows the authority of what you carry as a son and daughter. The benefits of knowing that you have the mind of Christ is to think Christ-like. Look, look at how Christ, this is how Christ knows because he knew who he was. He knew he was a son. He knew his father. This is in Mark 4, 35 to 38. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took along with them, they took him along in a boat and the little boats were also with him. A great windstorm arose. The waves beat against the boat and that, that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care? We are perishing. The mind of Christ says, I can rest in a storm because I know I'm safe. The mind of man says, Help, 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 I'm drowning. I'm going to die. But the mind of Christ knew. He knew he was safe and he was secure and it did not matter about the wind. It did not matter about the waves because he knew he could rest through it. Yeah. When we go through all manner of problems in this life, we can either freak out and run around and, and, and cry out, or we can rest through it and say, I know, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I'm safe. My father's got me. My father's got me. My favorite verse in the whole Bible is in Psalms. And David says, but as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. It's a declaration. Because David knew he was a son. David knew that, that his time is in God's hands. And David rested and was secure in that. And we, that is for all of us. Not for some of us. You are all sons. You are all daughters. And that is available to have that peace in the storm. That's new wineskin thinking. When we think like that, we're able to receive yeah. new wineskin thinking. The mind of Christ sees a little boy's lunch. It sees a couple of fish and, and a loaf of bread or a couple of loaves of bread and a fish and knows that it feeds 5,000. Yes. That's the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ knows the potential. The mind of Christ knows the truth of God and is secure in that truth. Because we can either look at the for sale sign out there and go, oh, this block's going to be sold. Or we can think with the mind of Christ and say, 
wow, what a testimony when God gives us the land. Amen. And we can see somebody doing something wrong and be judgmental. Or we can say, wow, what an opportunity for them to rise because the mind of Christ doesn't see that failing. He sees the potential. So good. I, I shared this this week and, and it's, in, um, it's in Luke 5 and it's when Peter meets Jesus for the first time and, and he asks him to go out into the boat and put down his net. And he says, I've caught nothing all night, but at your word, I'll do it. And so he goes out and he pulls up so many fish that two boats are sinking and he realizes that he's in the presence of God. And he says, depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. But the response of Jesus is, do not be afraid. I will make you a fisher of men. Because he doesn't look at our failings. He doesn't look at what we've done. He looks at what we will do. And he knows that was a little bit off track, but anyway. <laughs> so the mind of Christ knows the truth of our identity because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what this world says about you. It doesn't matter what um, John down the road says about you. It doesn't matter what a professor in the university says about you. It doesn't matter what a doctor says about you. It doesn't matter who says what about you but what God says about you and the truth of God's word is the truth in your life and that's the truth we have to hang on to because we are sons and daughters and in 1 John 3 it says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God Revelation 1 6 says Jesus has made us kings and priests to his God and father you church you, each one of you, are kings and priests. It doesn't matter if you're a girl. If you if you see sons in the in the Bible, and you're a girl, you're a son too. It's talking about every all of us are sons, all of us are daughters, all of us. It does no there's no male or female, but all are one in Christ. Yes. Romans eight sixteen to seventeen. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and yes. joint heirs with Christ. Amen. That is who you are. Yeah. Yes. That is who each one of you are. Yeah. Do not let the devil come in and lie and steal and kill and destroy your destiny because of a lie. Yeah. Yes. Don't be like the elephant pull out of that stake and walk into victory because that's what Jesus has done. Ephesians 2.6 And raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places with Jesus. Oh, yeah. i touched on that before. The devil comes to lie. He plants seeds of lies in us, makes us believe those lies. But God, but God, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. When those thoughts come in, when those lies come in, this is how I deal with it. And this, is a, this is a process that I want to encourage you to do. When I get a thought of, it works for judgment. It works for lust. It works for um, all condemnation. It works for fear. When those thoughts come in, prideful thoughts, when those thoughts come in of arrogance, we can say, well, I say, this is how I deal with it. Lord, I'm sorry for thinking that way. I just invite you into this thought process. I want you to come into it, Jesus. I want, I'll bring you into it. And I thank you and I'm so thankful that I have the mind of Christ because you don't have to beg for it. And in my prayer life, I've had to do this over the years is change the way I pray because I'm a son. Yeah. I'm not a beggar. Yeah. I don't have to be in there going, oh, please. God, I just wanted it, wanted it, wanted it, please. Like, like I'm, like I'm bow and, and I'm, I tell you what, I prayed it. I prayed like that. And God still honours those prayers. He's not closing his ears to it 
but a son doesn't pray that way. A daughter doesn't pray that way. A daughter says, Father, I know you know my needs. I thank you that I have it in you, Lord. I thank you that you've given it to me, Lord. I thank you that it's mine, Lord. Thank you. We are to be thankful. Grateful sons and daughters, not demanding little brat sons and daughters, but but thankful sons and daughters. And and when we get those thoughts, we can claim the mind of Christ. They are it is ours. It's ours. He didn't he didn't he didn't give it to us a, 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 and, and take it away. He didn't say, "You can ask me for the mind of Christ. You can beg me for the mind of Christ. It's yours. 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 Yours." Live it. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that you don't have it. Romans 8, 19 says, For this earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revelation of the sons of God. And that's where the power comes. Because this world is waiting for us to get the revelation of who we are so we take it for Jesus when we get that revelation when we stand up and when we know who we are when we know what's been paid for us when we know the position given to us we will take this world for Jesus there is no doubt because he's given it to us church we need to know the authority because when we know the authority that we are sons and daughters demons tremble and they flee they run screaming because they know that the authority, the same spirit that raised Christ from the yes. dead lives in Amen. each one of you and there is no exception. And you have the authority. You have the victory. I'm going to say it again. You are seated in heavenly places. Yes. And there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper because he's paid the price. That's right. And a renewed mind knows it's forgiven a renewed mind lives in the place when you fall that you're forgiven a renewed mind isn't sin focused it's Christ focused it doesn't dwell on the fact that you made a fall it doesn't dwell on the fact that you did something wrong it looks at the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and knows that it was enough and that it was finished do not let the devil lie to you and bring condemnation and say you are not worthy because he paid the cost he paid the price his grace is sufficient and there is no lie that can come against that so many times we can be focused upon the sin that we've committed and that brings condemnation because we think our sin is greater than his sacrifice. We think what we did trumps what he did. And that is such a lie. Because nothing trumps the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There is nothing that you have done that God is sitting up there going, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know if I can forgive that one or let it slide. Jesus already paid it. And he paid it in full. And for us to look at our sin and say it's greater than his sacrifice is looking at him and diminishing what he did on the cross. And we can't do that. That's right. Because what he did on that cross was amazing. So church today, I want to ask a question. Is there anybody here? Would you all bow your heads, please? Close your eyes. Is there anybody here that does not have that relationship with him? Is there anybody here that doesn't know that they are forgiven? That they are a son or a daughter? Is there anybody here that wants to become a son and a daughter today? Because all it takes is a yes. All it takes is a me, Lord, I want that. And I believe I know most of you here today, but I'm going to ask it every time. If you want to know Jesus today, put your hand up and I want to just lead you in a prayer. I see that hand. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that wants to know Jesus today? I see that hand too. Last time I'm going to ask. And also I want to pray. 
Church, I don't want you to hold back. If you are in the place where you just want to know that better, if you want those lies broken off your life, if you want um, if you want breakthrough in any area, don't hold back in your seat. The Spirit of God is here today to set people free. Yes. Don't sit in your seat and say, I'm okay. Oh, I just want you to let that fear go and say, I want all that you have for me, Jesus. I want to know that truth. I want to know your truth. I want to get the truth. I am a son. I am a daughter. If that's you today, I want you to make your way out to the front. We want to pray with you. And this altar is open for healing. This altar is open for any prayer. Please don't sit in your seats. If, you, if you're if you struggling or if you're just wanting a refresh, if you're just wanting prayer for anything, just come up. This altar is here for you guys. Bless you.